morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is Marketplace Monday. It's Winning in the Word Monday. It's coming from uh, the Word and being a fearless believer Monday. <laughs> I'm excited, man. I hope you guys are excited. You know, I think what I'm excited most about um, on Mondays is it is the beginning of the new week, right? It's the beginning of a new work week. Um, it's the beginning of a new week, uh, and we're coming off of a Sunday. So for me, you know, I, I go to bed at night thinking about, uh, the Sunday service and everything that happened in the service. And I just wake up fresh. I wake up renewed. I hope you do as well. Uh, today I want to talk about, I forget the exact title I gave Jeremiah. Let me, uh, hold on. Let me pull up my notes. Um, judging, judging. You know, I think that um, in the workplace, in the marketplace, whether we're a leader, uh, whether we're a, um, a business owner, whether we're an employee, uh, I think that judging can be a, 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 a asset and I think it can be a liability. And I think that we really need to understand it because I do think that in the workplace, um, a lot of people that are very carnally minded um, judge in the wrong way and end up hurting people and hurting relationships versus the right way. So let's get into this. Let's look at it this morning. Uh, good morning, Miss Cynthia. Good morning, Yalitza. Good morning, Annie. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning, Jeremiah. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Ashley. Good morning, Jerry. Jerry. Good morning to the Emersons. Missed you guys yesterday. Glad to see you online. Good morning, Joan. Thank you for the note this morning. Jennifer, good morning. Harry, good morning. Shanika, Good morning, Keita. Good morning to you, young lady. I know it's cold up there in the panhandle, you and Terry are up there. Uh, Ellie, good morning to you. Miss Donzi, good morning. You're up there as well. To my sister, good morning. Uh, Mary Jo, good morning. Cousin Faye, John, good morning. Uh, Candace, good morning. Lakeisha, good morning. Carmen, good to see you, young lady. Good morning, Michael. Good morning to you, sir. Deacon Daryl, good morning. Uh, Nigel, good morning. Love you guys, man. Let's pray and get right in the word. Father God, we thank you, Lord, uh, for this day. We thank you, Father, for your word. Um, I just thank you, Father, that your word cannot fail. Uh, your word holds true. Uh, your word never comes back vain, void, or non-productive, uh, but it's always producing, Father God. Uh, and I just thank you, Father, for the hearers and the doers of your word, for their lives being enriched, um, their lives moving forward, Father God and their lives just increasing every day, just like your word said it would. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Amen, 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 amen. So today I want to talk about judging in the workplace. You know, um, a lot of times when we get outside church, uh, we think that, you know, well, we're not in the church, so now we can just act and do whatever we want. And we have to realize that in the workplace, um, we are there to be a light. We are there. Um, part of what we do as a Christian uh, in the marketplace is we operate in the principles, the directives, and the wisdom of God and the Holy Spirit to become better in the workplace so that people then can see a difference in us it's not because of us, but it's because of the Holy Spirit. And as a result of that Holy Spirit um, leading us, guiding us, and making a difference in us, right, um, people want to understand what's different about us. And then that, in turn, leads them to ask about our God and, in turn, open up, opens up an opportunity to minister. So today I want to look at what Jesus says about and what the Bible says about judging. I think this is a an area that that is um, really misunderstood by Christians because a lot of Christians think because the Bible says, and I'm going to read it to you real quick here, don't judge, um, that we're not to question anything. And that's not what the Bible says. Okay. So let's read it uh, again. You know, it's kind of funny. Yesterday I was teaching on how sometimes the Bible People say the Bible contradicts itself. Well, if you don't understand the Bible, you don't read the Bible, you don't know the Bible, you, you might think that um, because you don't understand and you don't read it thoroughly. You read a couple of words of it and you grasp what you 
Well, a lot of times people want to make it say what they want it to say for their situation. But let me read this to you and then and then we'll get a better understanding. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 to 5, it says this. I'm reading out of the Passion Translation. It says, refuse to be a critic full of bias towards others. So, so, so even just that right there, refuse to be a critic. Refuse to be a critic full of bias towards others. It didn't say don't be a critic. It said be a critic full of bias towards others. What is your criticism towards? So in other words, when you're criticizing, when you're judging, when you're bringing out an issue in the marketplace, are you making it personal? Is it personal or are, are what you are pointing out or discussing for the betterment of the business? I'm going to give you some examples of this, but let me read this. It says, refuse to be a critic full of bias towards others. And you will not be judged. For you'll only be judged by the same standard that you've used to judge others. There we go back to that same standard. The measurement that you use on them will be used on you. Okay? Why would you focus on the flaws in someone else's life and fail to notice the glaring flaws in your own life? How could you say to your friend, let me show you where you're wrong when you're guilty of even more? You're being a hypocritical, you're being hypocritical and and a hypocrite for watch this for acknowledge and deal with your own blind spots, and then you'll be capable of dealing with the blind spots of your friend. So I think the point that's being made here is God's not telling us don't ever judge somebody. God's not telling us don't ever judge a situation or a circumstance. God's not saying we don't ever call things out because we know the Bible says know the truth and the truth will make you free. So we know that's not what God's saying. What we're talking about here is having a judging spirit versus a discerning spirit. So again, it's a spiritual thing. Are you judging them or are you discerning? Are you talking about the issue at hand? Or is there something deeper inside that you're trying to make a point of? So, for instance, let me give you an example. Um, somebody didn't properly sweep the floor. You, you know, you're working, you're a manager, a guy's a, a, a janitor, and his job is to sweep the floor. And he didn't do a good job. Are you judging, right, that person? Are you judging that person if you tell them they did a bad job on sweeping the floor? Well, no, it's your job. You're the supervisor. The job's got to be done right. You're not judging them because the floor is not properly swept. Where you're judging them is when you say to them, if you point out, not judging them is saying, listen, um, here, here's the standard we talked about relative to sweeping the floor. Um, let's step back. Give me your, give me your assessment of the floor and, and the job that you've done cleaning and sweeping it. And you let them give you an assessment. And let's say they say it's like a, a, an eight. Okay. Well, let me show you why it's not an eight. And you take the time and you go through and you show them. the judging way is when you tell them, you know what, you know, you're kind of heavy and you're kind of fat. You know, I think you're kind of lazy. You know, I, I've noticed you're very lazy. And, and, the, and the floor isn't, isn't done like it needs. That, see, that's judging somebody. You're, you're getting personal. You, you're, you're making a judgment that because they're maybe a little overweight, that they're, they're, that they're lazy. That, that's judging people. That's, that's a destructive thing to do to people. And, and in the workplace, this happens all the time. You know, um, maybe you, you know, maybe you assume somebody's doing something, and you bring that back to their work. That that's not number one. It's not godly. 
Number two, it's not going to help you in business. And this is the problem. And this is why we get into this judging thing, because we make things personal. Anytime you're pointing out something about somebody and you make it personal, that's judging. That's, that's not godly. Jesus says in John chapter 7, verse 24, judge not according to appearances. Judge not according to the appearances. Judge not according to the appearances, but judge, watch this, righteous judgment. Judge not according to the appearances, but judge rightful judgment. So in other words, when you're giving your opinion, when you're giving your criticism, when you're giving your correction, are you doing it? And, and this will always help you in judging. This will always help you in correcting. Is it about the greater goal? Is it about the greater vision? Is what you're talking about, about making the company better, making the church better? making the business better or is what you're talking about something you know you you've been wanting to talk to to, to Leroy about some Leroy's been doing something you don't like to you so now you have an opportunity based on something he's just done to kind of get even with him that's not that's not godly that's not godly and that, that's where we have to really watch ourselves, especially in the workplace. So ask yourself these questions. Watch this. Do you find it easier to find wrong in others versus what is right with them? Or taking the time to hear from the Holy Spirit on the situation? Let me say that again. Do you find it easier to find wrong in others? Do you find it easier to find wrong in others versus what's right with them? Or taking the time to hear from the Holy Spirit about their situation. I do this all the time, man, because let me tell you something. I'm a, I'm a very demanding person. And I know I'm demanding. I'm demanding of my church leadership. I'm demanding in the world of the people that work for me. I'm demanding of my church. I'm demanding of the people who work in the chair. I'm demanding. So I always make it a point to pray for the people that work for me, for them to be successful. And I always, when I'm praying for somebody, I pray about the strong points that they have. And I pray for God to accentuate them and God to make them better. Why? So that if I want to, if I get into the wrong criticism frame, my, frame my uh, 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 way of thinking about them, God will shift me back to the things I know they do well. So ask yourself that question. A lot of times, especially in business, we don't want to take the time to pray about things. We think because we're in the world, we're not in church, we don't pray about them. The Bible says we should always be praying without ceasing. Number two, do your criticisms humiliate rather than edify the person? Now, I got to tell you, before I heard about this, I mean, that's all we did was try to humiliate people. I mean, it's still something I work on, man. I mean, I, I get, you know, I mean, I, listen, it, it's like, it's like I tell people all the time, man, when I used to play sports, man, I wasn't a good sport. When I boxed, I never hugged after a fight. I didn't help people up. I mean, I was mean. I mean, I wanted to be, why? I was insecure. That was my persona, right? That was my way of covering my insecurity. People do that all the time. People that are constantly criticizing and looking to humiliate you, understand they're the ones with the problem. And if that's you, you have a problem. You have a problem and you need to go to God about it. So do your, do your criticize, criticisms humiliate rather than edify? There's righteous criticism. We just read it. Jesus said it. There is righteous criticism. There's a way that you talk about things. 
Okay. Number three, and this is the last one for today. Do you insist on being right rather than righting your wrongs? Do you insist on being right rather than righting your wrongs? You know, when I get when I get to a certain point, I really work on myself, trying to understand, trying to understand, trying to understand. But I get to a certain point. Um, in the world, I get to this point when it's affecting the team. If somebody's doing something that affects me, it doesn't bother me because I'm a big boy and I can handle it. But if you're doing something in the world that affects the team, I'm going to call you on the carpet about it. In the church, if you're saying something to me, it doesn't bother me. Again, if it's affecting the vision or what we've been called to do, then I'm going to get on you. But even in the instance when I come to that culmination, my way of handling that is I say, look, here's where I'm at. Here's what I think. And I give the person an opportunity. I'm going to tell you everything I think, and then I'm going to let you talk. And I'm okay listening to what you have to say. Because I believe sometimes there are things that we do that elicit some of the negative responses that we get from people. So we need to learn to listen. And sometimes we can't listen because we don't call the thing on the carpet. And sometimes people just don't feel free to speak to you. So especially with me, because I have this, you know, I guess this dominating personality, I don't know. But sometimes people just can't open up to me and say, Pastor or Nick, you know, blah, blah, blah. So sometimes what I do is I clear the air to give them that space to speak freely. Because here's the thing about me, and people don't sometimes don't understand this. My job is to win. My job is to get the gold done. My job is to do the best we can do. Nothing's personal with me. Nothing's personal. If you're doing something to me that's going to affect me, you, negatively, you're going to get one opportunity to do that. And you may get another, but you're not going to get multiples because, because I know who I am and I got to protect that. But I will give you the opportunity to voice your opinion and, and then let's help get it right before it gets to a bad end. So we need to think about this when we're criticizing people in the, in the marketplace, when we're working with people. The takeaway today, I think the best one is, are you insisting on being right rather than righting the wrong or your wrongs? Again, I think if you want to do righteous criticism, keep it about the greater goal. I think if you want to know if you have a problem with judging and criticizing people, are you making your judgment personal? Are you making what you say personal? Y'all, Parents do this with their kids. Y'all dig for your kids. You know, we used to call it digging for people back in the day. So now we're Christians. We don't dig for people. Amen. I love you. I hope this helps you in the marketplace today. Go out there today to win. Tomorrow's Together in Marriage Tuesday. We've got a big announcement about the show on February the 8th, uh, Matters of the Heart on Marriage. we got our Facebook group together. We're going to be getting all you guys invited into it. February the 8th, the first show. Tell a friend. Tell your husband. Tell your wife. It's going to be twice a month, one hour a day on Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock. It's got a full course. You're going to go in. You're going to, you know, you're going to going to do coursework, man. I'm telling you, you're going to come away with a certificate. We're going to have a culmination. It's going to be a great event. I love you. I love you. I love you. We'll tell you more tomorrow. Until then, Pastor Nick saying, enjoy life.